Okay, welcome to the Paranormal Highway. Today is a great throwdown. We've got the Bigfoot versus the Dog Man. What's the bigger story? What's the bigger story for you? Is it the Bigfoot? Because the whole world knows the Bigfoot, or is it the mysterious creature? Of the dog man. You might not even know who dog man is. Now most people in my chat know who dog man is. But it's the battle of the battle. Who's going to win? Who are you going to vote for? While I put the intro on. You get your coffee. Go to the bathroom break. I'll put the poll up. And then we'll get, get, we're going to get this party started. Alright. So let's do this. Is up. It's fresh. It started. What's the bigger story? Bigfoot or the dog man? Now we know history. Bigfoot's always the bigger story. We know that. Bigfoot's huge. I mean, everybody almost on this planet knows a version of Bigfoot. Now, some countries have different names, you know, the Yeti. I mean, there's there's a lot of different names. But think about this. Everybody knows Bigfoot. Now, somehow, let's say. Tomorrow, I don't know, our wonderful, most trustful government that tells us the truth, whatever, comes out and says Bigfoot's 100% real. I don't know. We got, we, got a, we got a Bigfoot in a zoo. I don't know. I don't think Bigfoot should be in a zoo, but Bigfoot's in a zoo or whatever, whatever it is. Bigfoot's real. I think most people be like, wow, you know, you know, you know you'd be interested in where did the Bigfoot come from? You know, you know how was the Bigfoot molded or stuff like that, right? So I don't think people be as freaked out with the Bigfoot. I don't think people would. I know people in Washington want it because Bigfoot's always been part of the state of Washington. Okay, so I think most people would accept the Bigfoot. They'll, they'll kind of treat it like another animal out in the woods, which they're more intelligent than the average animal. But what if the government comes out and says, we got a dog man? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell's a dog man? Werewolf? I mean, wouldn't you be more in a, in, in a strange way? Like, like I don't know, scared or not, but like, what the hell's a dog man? I mean, werewolves are real. Do people turn into a werewolf? Skinwalkers? I mean, Dogman opens up this whole different kind of point of view that you kind of like trip out on, right? I mean, I mean, when you think about it that way, you know, would the Dogman be the bigger story? I mean, the bigger story depends on what you think. If it's history, Bigfoot wins hands down. But if somehow tomorrow one of these become real... I think people be more shocked with the dog man versus the Bigfoot because the Bigfoot's already been in most people's minds. You know, I mean, you go to the grocery store, whatever department store, there's always some pictures of a Bigfoot. You know, there's, I don't know, children's books. There's a car. There's this, there's, this, there's, this, there's this weird guy that makes this cartoon series and Bigfoot's part of it. Weird, right? People don't accept that. But what if that was a dog man? 
that would be kind of more trippier. So in some ways, there is a way that a dogman is could be the bigger story. But again, it's all up to you. Now, let's check out the voting for now. Let's just see, see where we're at with the voting. All right. So far, we got 15 votes in, 87% Bigfoot, and 13% Dogman, which is, I, I, I understand it. I, I, I get it. Bigfoot's in everybody's mind. But I don't know, man. If both stories come out that both things are real, I don't know. I think more people would be more towards the dog man because they don't know anything about this thing. They'll be more scared of the dog man versus the Bigfoot. It's 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 a weird it's a weird thing. Now now uh finding videos of like origins of, of the Bigfoot is was very difficult on YouTube because most everything is copyrighted to the point where they're blocked. So I found some stuff, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, they, these aren't the best videos in the world, but I have to do what I work with. But before we get to some videos, before we get to some videos, I got some news about the Bigfoot from, from, from many of you guys. I will be going on a three-day Bigfoot investigation, research, I don't want to use hunting Bigfoot because I don't hunt the Bigfoot. Hunting is like you're killing. I'm not killing Bigfoot. But I would be spending three days. I'm going to show you where I'm going. And I'm so excited for this. And so, okay. Now, you see the state of Washington. Now, I live in the Seattle area. Okay. So, I, I live in the Seattle area. Now, towards the left next to the um, Pacific Ocean is the Olympic Mountains. Now, if anybody knows about Bigfoot stories, theories, that it's safe to say that the Olympic Mountains is supposedly the hot spot of all granddaddy of all Bigfoots. I mean, the, the, the number one sightings, the, the number one place supposedly when I mean, we all physically don't really know that the Bigfoot lives is in the Olympic mountains. So if you look on the left, you see that brown part in the corner. That is where Bigfoot, the, 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 the most Bigfoot tribe lives according to there. So I will be up there for three days, August 26, three full days. So, of course, on that Monday, there's not going to be a show because I'm going to be backpacking in the back of the woods. Now, I'm going to have, I'm going to film, you know, of course, I'm going to film and all that. Now, anybody who knows me knows that, that I don't exaggerate. I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to do things just for clicks and views. If I catch something, great. If I don't, then I don't. But I will be personally going on a Bigfoot hunt. It's just going to be me and my 18-year-old son. There's some uh, Bigfoot uh, people that supposedly in community, but not one of them want to uh, uh, go investigate with me. I uh, go screw themselves. But we're going to go out there. We got the gear. We got the stuff. And we're going to spend three whole days. We got special reservations on a spot by a big, huge uh, lake up there. There's a huge lake up there. Stream. So... So I will be on a three-day Bigfoot investigation where, according to records, according to, um, I, I don't know where they get the data, that the Olympic Mountains is the number one hot spot for the Bigfoot. So I will be there for three days. Can't wait for that trip. I'm getting my gear ready now. It's exciting. But I will be in the Olympic Mountains. So. So if I don't come out, if I don't come out, if I don't have a show on Tuesday, that means the big for the dog man got the best of me. They got the best of me. All right. So the first video is going to, of course, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to dissect the Bigfoot. 
what if Bigfoot actually exists? Now, I know Bigfoot exists because I had an encounter with the Bigfoot. But that's what the video is called. That's where we're going to take a look to see what if Bigfoot exists. Let's check it out. The truth is out there. With thousands of sightings, theories, and believers, the creature known as Bigfoot has become the stuff of legend. What if this fabled cryptid was doing more than lurking in our imaginations? What if Bigfoot was actually real? Where did Bigfoot come from? What secrets would it reveal? And could it really be out there? First, we all know he is out there. What's some good questions? What secrets? Where did how the Bigfoot come from? These are all great questions. So let's check out more of this video. Like I said, it's not a perfect video, but most videos I'm I i was not allowed to play. So this is like the only video that gave me permission. This is what if. And here's what would happen if Bigfoot exists. Does exist. When Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin shot a few seconds of film, possibly showing the legendary beast in Humboldt County, California, it sparked the imagination of thousands. But Bigfoot lurked in the minds of the curious long before the Patterson-Gimlin footage. Now guys, that's really important to know. That footage, yeah, got Bigfoot on the on the main stage, you know, from club level to big stadium stage. But if you look at the history of Bigfoot, the history of Bigfoot's have always been there with the Native Americans all around the world. There, there, there's just different names, you know, like Japan, the Hubagon, the the uh, <laughs> Hibagon, the Hibagon Bigfoot. There's just different names of the Bigfoot in all parts of the country. So Bigfoot has always existed in stories, but that little film footage took took the Bigfoot from bar level to stadium level. Variations around the world include the Sasquatch, Yeti, Skunk Ape, Yowie, and Wild Man. But now the Wild Man is very interesting because I'll tell you right now who's the Wild Man. This guy right there, Long Island Bigfoot Mike. That is actually the wild man. I really think that Mike is really truly a wild man Bigfoot. I think he just shaves very well. He look more human-like. But I think Long Island Bigfoot is actually the real Bigfoot. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That Bigfoots do like him. But what was it really? While Bigfoot sure is a catchy name, the creature would need some better identification than that. A popular theory suggests that Bigfoot is closely related to the long extinct Gigantopithecus, a distant cousin to the orangutan that lived throughout Southeast Asia. Gigantopithecus stood over three meters tall and weighed up to 270 kilograms. Little is known about this mysterious giant, which only adds to the Bigfoot myth. Researchers have, however, managed to find sets of teeth and partial jaws. Studies of these chompers have given us some insight into the Gigantopithecus lifestyle. It's believed that prior to its extinction, the Gigantopithecus lived on a diet of fruits, leaves, and roots, all things it could find in its native homeland. But is it possible the giant ape could have migrated? Maybe to avoid a predator or because of climate change? What if the strange sightings of Bigfoot were a result of this creature crossing the ice bridge to North America with its descendants evolving into a separate species? Now, all that are all good possibilities. You know, the world... I mean, we only live between zero to a hundred years. But we, tr you know, and, and the planet's been here for what, millions and millions and millions of years. We truly don't know the exact full climate change overall through the system, you know, like, like cold fronts, heat fronts, and all that. So what changes do a person or an animal go through a, a major climate change look right now right now we're kind of uh, in, in a climate change of 
more heat. And I'm sure that our bodies are going to adapt eventually towards the more heat. Where if it was reversed, where it's more cold or something, you know, more cold. Remember, uh, I know this is crazy. I know this is crazy. But if you remember the great movie, uh, Waterworld with Kevin Costner, where they're living on top of the ocean, where Kevin Costner starts to, you know, evolution starts to take Kevin Costner and he started getting gills to breathe underwater to adapt to the new world. So the possibility of, of uh, if, if that's where Bigfoot might have come from, who says that's not true? I mean, we truly don't know. Now, we all, all of us here, first of all, we're trying to prove the existence of Bigfoot even in the first place. And then once, you, once people believe that Bigfoot's real, then the second question is, is, is was Bigfoot human, more human, or was it from the uh, gorilla type of, I'm not even going to try to say that word because I'll just screw up the word big time. Uh, yeah. Roger Blair could be related to the Bigfoot. We truly don't know. It could be. Oh, Danny, I'm sorry to hear it. you got a nurse there. You know, hope hopefully, Danny, you get yourself a happy ending. All right, let's continue. Or maybe Bigfoot has a little more in common with something else. You. You, even with all your sophisticated human traits, come from the same family tree as animals. This line of thinking leads to the idea that in order for us to have broken off from our primate roots, there must have been a middleman, or more appropriately, a missing link. In the 1990s, the concept of a molecular clock was developed. This technology proves that molecules are constantly shifting and changing. The older the split between different species is, the more molecular differences there are going to be. Using this molecular clock idea, blood from humans and gorillas was sampled. And it was found that we shared a common ancestor about 11 million years ago. Could Bigfoot be what researchers call our last common ancestor? Well, that could be true too. There's, there's nothing wrong with that theory. Like I said, we don't know. And we might have discovered, people, that Mike Johnson is 6'9". And he might be a relation to the Bigfoot. Let's check it out. Oh, shoot. Oh, my bad. My bad. There we go. I'm sorry about that. Let me go back a little bit more here. We'll just start from there. I'm sorry. And gorillas was sampled. And it was found that we shared a common ancestor about 11 million years ago. Could Bigfoot be what researchers call our last common ancestor? Well, the search for our missing link still exists, and the search doesn't look like it's going to be that easy. Many people worry that if the last common ancestor actually is found, we won't even be able to recognize it. So is it possible Bigfoot could be lurking out there? While it's easy to dismiss Bigfoot sightings as a hoax, there were 71 new species discovered in 2019 alone. So it isn't unreasonable to state that we don't know about everything that lives on Earth. In fact, guys, think about that. 71,000 new species in 2019. Now, what if, oh, shit. What if this thing here is Bigfoot? Look at this. Oh, this is a Yeti. This is a Yeti. This is a Yeti, huh? Are you are you are you are you a relation to the Bigfoot? Are you a relation to Bigfoot? Look at it. This is a Yeti. Look at this thing. God, look at all that hair that just flies out. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's a Yeti. That's a Yeti. You know. Now I'm gonna play another video. It's kind of interesting because uh uh the, there's this um woman. Bigfoot evidence seen in DNA 
study veterinarians claims that species is real. And the reason I'm playing this Bigfoot stuff, just so that that Bigfoot is not going to be real, a, a, a real shock to the world. You know, if you had a Bigfoot, that's what you'd be studying next. How did the Bigfoot come from? Where did he come from? Was it from the monkey size? Is it from us? That That's the mystery of the Bigfoot. But let's check out this uh, uh, DNA by a veterinary doctor. An ancient mystery with the help of a prominent veterinarian who says she can prove that Bigfoot exists and that he's related to all of us. ABC's Nick Watt tracked her down. He's elusive, almost human, a cornerstone of our mythology. And now someone is saying that Harry was a good movie. Henderson's could actually be like a documentary. Yeah! There's someone with a scientific background, a vet, who says Bigfoot is real and actually related to us humans. Well, I was a skeptic. I did not believe these things existed at all prior to this study. She's talking analysis of Sasquatch fur. After a five-year study, more than 100 DNA samples, Dr. Melba Ketchum believes the species developed 15,000 years ago, a hybrid cross between Homo sapiens and an unknown primate. Nobody has ever found another type of people that are living contemporary to us. I mean, they live right under our noses, and we never even were able to get proof of this until now. Listen. There have been innumerable sightings. Some Sasquatch hunters have even deigned to speak to Conan O'Brien. See, I know they exist. You know he exists, and... They. They exist. There's more than one Bigfoot. They're a species. They're like a primate. Really? Really? He even has his own Animal Planet series. These are not just animals. These are a type of people. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be found. I'm going to say something. I agree with her. These are more like people. If people want to call them animals, then you call them animals. But these things are more than animals. These things are smart. They're intelligent. They know how to hide. They know they know when you're good and you're bad. And you know, there's they're smart animals, but an animal wouldn't be able to hide as well as they do behind us. We we will find we will find deer hunting. Bucks know when it's deer season. They're out there. They're hiding. But a real hunter would be able to find the buck, the deer. But a Bigfoot's more human. Listen, if you had a, a group of uh, rangers, uh, Green Berets, Special Forces, whatever whatever you want, Navy SEALs, these humans, if, they, if they're in your woods, you won't even know they're there. They would they, they, They're trained. They're special. Now think about it. The Bigfoot... They're trained because that's their woods. They know it. They know you. They can feel you. Animals are some, could be smart, but not 100% smart where they're going to escape from humans. So these things are humans. I think these things could be smarter. I think they're smarter than us. What is this here? Agreed. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad somebody agrees with me. Uh, Danielle wrote, Eric, uh, intuitive like a horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I more in belief of these are another types of humans <laughs> living in the woods. The dogman says it's rough. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, maybe it's too weird, but even the possibility. Oh my goodness! I want to believe. Can you imagine if Bigfoot is actually real? For Good Morning America, Nick Watt, ABC News. You. Oh, well, first of all, I don't have to imagine. I know Bigfoot's real because of my own experience. You know, just you know, like I said, you know, for us, you know, being be my my family are hunters. I don't know how you guys feel about hunters, but my family, they that's what our family did. They go hunting every year in the mountains. You know, we camp in the same spot every year. I feel like when we had our encounter, and there was eleven of us, wasn't just. Two or three. There was eleven of us who who spotted the Bigfoot. We so we know it's real, and we know the Bigfoot. When you start thinking about, it, of course, at that moment in time, when you see the Bigfoot, you're just your mind is just frozen. Like, what the hell am I just looking at? 
You know what I mean? You're kind of frozen in a way. You're not thinking of everything else. But when you start sitting back and thinking about the whole event, you're kind of thinking that that Bigfoot knew us. I mean, we're, we camp there every year. I mean, we're up in those mountains, the same spot for three months out of the year. And sometimes even more, you know, we go out, visit, make sure our camp spot's still clean throughout the year, make sure it's ready for the big, you know, the big seat when the season comes up. So we, we felt that the Bigfoot knew us. They're smart. They're intelligent. In a lot of ways, when we saw the Bigfoot, when we went, I don't know, being stupid young kids going after it, the thing could have turned around and, and, and killed us. It didn't. And it just tells you how intelligent and smart. And then all of a sudden, the Bigfoot was gone, vanished. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're there. It vanished because of wormholes and all that. Now, I heard of that theory. I'm not saying that theory is not a possibility because anything on this planet in this world could be a possibility. But I just think the Bigfoot's like a green beret, like a ranger. They just, they know it better. They just disappear. If they're like you, Eric, I like hunters. <laughs> hey, listen, we were, uh, 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 our family was respectful hunters. I, I know it's weird to say we respected the land. We, we respect. That's why growing up, you know, when they talked about the woods, the bears, you know, they even talked about Bigfoot out there, you know, you respect them. They'll respect you, but don't be an idiot and go places by yourselves. You know, like, like, when you got to go bathroom, you're going by yourself, but be careful, you know, let somebody know that, that you're going out to, you know, use the bathroom just in case you don't come back, they can come find you. So it's, it's mm -hmm. called respect, being smart. The woods is no joke. The woods is no joke. You know, so that's about, that's about the Bigfoot, you know, the Bigfoot. The history's there. Everybody knows the Bigfoot. So most common people are going to pick the bigger story as Bigfoot. We know that. But the dog man, if the dog man is real, what the hell is it? Is, is, is the dog man just an uglier version of a Bigfoot? Now, a lot of Bigfoot people will tell you, no, it's not. It's different. It's growl. It's more... It's more like a skinwalker. I mean, when to go. I mean, we don't know exactly. I mean, there's so many theories about the dog man. Dog man was created from a, a experimental experiments that's gone wrong. I mean, I've heard that. You know, there's 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 different theories of what the dog man, but what the you know, what if dog man was real and trying to find videos about a dog man in, in a short, like shorter video. There's like there's long ones. But of course, I can't play long videos. Of course, those most of those copyrighted. So I did find a video. Now I'm not gonna say it's the best video in the world. Like I said, I had to find videos that are not copyrighted that I could use. This video about the dog man I'm gonna show you is called "The Legend and the History of the Dog Man of of Michigan," because a lot of the story of the dog man kind of originated in Michigan. I mean, dog man stories are all around the world, but but Dogman in the United States is really known from uh, from Michigan. So let's take a look at this video. And again, this, these aren't the best in the world, but it doesn't matter. It's just about getting in information. Just enough to see information on see, will this change your vote? Or this, or, you know, you already made up your mind. What's the bigger story? Let's check it out. It was 10 years later in 97 when a farmer near Buckley was found slumped over his plow, his heart had stopped. There were dog tracks all around. He was seven feet tall. He had shining eyes and a terrifying howl. He looked like a man, but was more like a dog. He was the dog man of Michigan. Let's explore the legend of the dog man from the late 1800s with Rachel Clark from the Michigan History Center. Rachel, welcome. Thank you. So, so you heard it right there, the history of dog man from the 1800s. So, so the dog man is, is not a story that was just developed in recent years. So like the Bigfoot, there is a history of a dog man. It's just the dog man is still, 
you know, maybe not bar level. Maybe Dogman is playing at a club level. They're not stadium level like the Bigfoot. But there is, oh, World Bigfoot Radio. Guys, if you want one of the best channels, one of the best channels about the Bigfoot, you go to World Bigfoot Radio. The, the, the channel's got, he has so much knowledge, research, everything. And Danny put a link to his uh, uh, channel. If you're not subscribed to his channel, do it now. Do it before you leave. He's a, it's, a, it's one of the best Bigfoot channels out there. And I, I put my stamp of approval, if it means anything. Really check out his channel. Oh, what is the legend of the dog man? The legend of the dog man. So this is a part man, part dog that people have been encountering throughout Michigan and parts of Wisconsin for about the last 130 years. The reports vary, but he's described being seven foot tall when he stands on his two legs. His eyes are yellow or they're blue. He's very agile. His howl sounds like a human scream. He is everything you would expect to find in a dog man in the woods of Michigan. So what were some of the specific... Not just Michigan, all around the world. That's about a description, you know, around the world on what a, a Bigfoot could be about, you know, when she's like a dog now. It, 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 that's not that's not getting confused saying the dog man is mixed with the dog you know that that's that that's the mystery right that's the mystery it's easier to believe listen guys let's be honest it's easier to believe that bigfoot is real which a lot of us know he is real because of our own encounters but the common person out there i'm talking about other people who are not into this stuff like we are you ask the common person about the Bigfoot, a lot of some of them will say, "Yeah, they're intrigued. They believe in the Bigfoot. You know, they think there's there's something out there." But you ask about the dog man, most of them want to know what the hell you're talking about. They won't even know what the hell is a dog man. You know what I mean? So the most common people won't even. It, it's like you try to make somebody believe in something. You have a shot with Bigfoot. But you probably want to have a shot to make a, a a casual person out there a believer in the dog man. If you do, great freaking job. Reports that people had of sightings. Back in some of the original encounters are a lot of logging camps that see him or her. I guess we assume it's a man. It and could be a dog woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was wearing pants. Uh, so, in, so that's 1887 in Wexford County. So the early reports... I'm going to pause it again. World Bigfoot just repeating exactly what I said. Um, there are sightings Bigfoot from all over the world, which we all know that with the first earlier videos, but there are also reports of dogman like creatures being seen on several continents. Yeah, there's different. And you might not even know because some other countries story of the dogman is they have a total different name. You know, not, not everybody adopts Americans' titles. You know, like the Yeti, the Skunk, I mean, the Bigfoot's the Sasquatch. There's so many different names of, of the Bigfoot. The Dogman has all different names around the world. It's just when you hear some of these folklore stories, if you really listen and how they describe whatever they're talking about, it's basically the dog, Dogman. It's just they call it differently. There's just, there's just, there's just different names are usually of men working in the woods who encounter this beast during their time there. And then over the years, it's a lot of times people who are, again, alone, either on an isolated road or in the woods. Their encounters are very similar, though. They do talk about this beast coming out of the woods. It is very agile. It jumps in front of their car or in front of them. It scratches at their houses or their tents. So the encounters, as described, are very, very similar in that way. And do people report being afraid or just sort of surprised and confused? Afraid. Very afraid. There have been... Well, listen. No shit. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're camping, your tent, this wolf-like creature. Listen, a bear walks in your, your, your camp. You're probably shitting some bricks. I mean, you know what I mean? 
And they said, if a Bigfoot walks into your camp, you're probably going to shit your bricks for a little bit because you're not realizing what it is. But a red-eyed creature, you're really going to shit your bricks. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to go, you're going to, when you drive home that night, you know, your car is going to stink with a lot of loads you have in your pants. So being afraid, and there's nothing wrong with being afraid, <laughs> you know, listen, if a creature with the red eye, it's not like, oh, can I pet you? Can I, come here, let me give you a little doggy snack. <laughs> you are the snack. So that's not really a stretch reports as any good story goes that people have been scared to death by the sightings of the dog man there have been quite a few of those especially earlier on and then the more recent encounters are just people who are afraid and also very confused at what they think they're seeing so how long did this saga last it has been actually going on for a long time as i said it starts in 1887 in wexford county by two lumberjacks and then the reports are Dogman makes an appearance every 10 years on years that end with a seven. So starts in 1887. That's so funny. Recorded, <laughs> yes, recorded <laughs> encounters, and then 97, 07, and so on, all the way up through. You know us, slow motion. Uh, one of my favorite werewolf movies is Dog Soldiers. Dog Soldiers, but if you remember in the movie uh, American Werewolf in London, you remember in that movie, in one of the scenes that that these werewolves kick the door open with helmets on, soldiers with machine guns. Those were more like dogman, dogman shapes versus a werewolf. You know, so even American Wolf in London was influenced by stories. If you listen to the people who wrote the book, they were actually influenced by some folklore stories of the dog man. So that's why when the soldiers came in, it looked more like a dog man because they were actually influenced on that scene. Now, in the, in the movie, it occurs that they're saying all werewolves, but they were influenced by the dog man. So that's why with the machine gun, they were that that was that was actually probably what the dog man looks like. So let's hear more. So that is how those encounters tend to go. I don't know where he's going for those other 10 years, but uh, <laughs> apparently a couple years ago, he made an appearance somewhere. So we know just based on human biology that we didn't have a man who was living for 100, 150 years as a dog man. Were there any confirmed sightings or anything that we we knew that sort of pinpointed who or what this might be? There have been, especially in recent times, reports and actual descriptions of the encounters and quote-unquote proof of the encounter. There are photographs. Uh, there, I just heard a uh, on-star phone call from somebody, apparently, it was totally fake, but uh, <laughs> reporting to OnStar that dog man ran in front of his car and he flipped his car. But those are the types of evidence that people are putting forth. And then there is one film that came out called The Gable Film. Yes. What is The Gable Film? Yes. The Gable Film. It looks like it's filmed on like nine millimeter, nine millimeter film. And it's it looks like the 70s because of the vehicles. And there are people who look like they're on vacation and they're snowmobiling. And there's a, I think it's a, a young boy who has the camera when he's in his car and he's panning across the scenery in the car and he captures this thing in the woods that they're driving by. So the Gable film for a little bit was supposed to be the evidence of Dogman's existence in northern Michigan and then it came out to be completely fake. <laughs> the people who created it admitted <laughs> that they faked it. It's a really good fake. They did it. They put a lot of effort into it. And that's the problem. People fake stuff all the time. That's the problem. It kind of, it kind of, it, it kind of, you know, it sucks for people who really truly investigate Bigfoots and Dogmans and people literally on purpose create fake videos just for clicks and views. And we all seen it, man. We, 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 we seen it, you know, the dead Bigfoot in, in the refrigerator. I mean, people will go out of any links nowadays, especially nowadays, that any, because it's not, 
soon as, you know, the fakers will get caught. They eventually will get caught. At the end of the day, everybody eventually will get caught faking UFOs, faking ghosts, faking Bigfoot, faking Dogman, faking, faking, faking. But the problem is, is a lot of these people don't care once they get caught because they already made a lot of the money before it. I mean, I mean, it, it, you know, once you get caught, unless you get sued or, you know, all the money you made from being caught, you still have, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it's like a lot of those, uh, uh, big company corporations, people who get caught, uh, trading the trades and all that. And they get arrested. They get, they get home arrested. They go home, they pay this fine, but they still have millions of dollars. So why do people fake things? Because you want to make all that money. Listen, we all know Jerry Corbell is a faker. He gets all these people to fake with him. He's worth over $5 million because of the UFO stuff. And we know he's faking it. It's already money. If it came out tomorrow that Jeremy Corbell set everything up, especially with David Grush now and everything that, that he's... His bank account still $5 million. So that's why they do it. That's why they do it. You know? Because there's a big payday. You get that big payday. Boom. It is it is what it is. All these big corporations, they get busted. They get home, rested, or, or even they go to jail for a year. They get out. They still got millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, there was a, a, a tech company, right? There's a tech tech company that keeps getting busted. They keep have to pay fines because they keep breaking the rules or the gray area. And I, I can't remember who it was. The guy goes, yeah, yeah, we go over the gray area. But we make millions out of the gray area. And when we get busted, we have to pay a fine. Could be hundreds of thousand dollars. But we still made millions over the hundred thousand dollars. And once they pay that fine, they regroup. They name the company something different. They have a buddy or friend. They might have to change names on it, but they go back and do the same thing because the amount of money they make to the point to the part that they have to pay to get caught is here. And they still have this much money. It's it's that's how the world looks. So we're always gonna have fake videos, and it sucks. But at least we got each other, right? We got everybody in the chat. We got each other, you know, and when you know, we are. Uh, what sucks is, is those can't prove it or laugh at, but I want to know what, what they are want to know. What do they, what do they want? Yeah, I know. huh? Yeah. What do they want? That's the question. What do they want? Let's hear more of this. It kind of reminded me in, in watching it of the Blair Witch Project movie. Blair Witch. Yeah. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> yeah. Um, yep. Well, it, yes, like you said, it was a good fake. And there was a movie, I think, that was created around it mm -hmm. as well, this legend. Yep. You always get stuff like that. Talk about popular culture as a. You guys, you know, the Blair Witch. I was living in uh, Frederick, Maryland. Uh, Frederick, Maryland uh, is outside of where the Blair Witch is filmed. And that movie came out. I remember my brother and I, we wrote, we drove out there to, to the Blair Witch area. And you talk to the people who live in that area. People believe that movie was real. That they really had found footage. Because there wasn't really a whole lot of found footage movies yet. But people believed it. Even when the movie is out, it was, you know, it was known to be fake. People still believe it. That's the thing. People believe. E even when the truth comes out that is fake, people still believe it. What happens is people start to make excuses for videos. It's kind of like, it's uh, you know what I mean? They make excuses. And it's like, like uh, uh, well, you know, all these whistleblowers, you know, you say, well, when, you know, I always say, you know, if they were releasing classified information, they'll be arrested. They would be arrested. Just like Snowden. Them. But people say, 
Well, they know that they got arrested to become bigger than it is. They, they, they really, you know, everybody has a reason and an excuse when a story, a whistleblower, or something is fake. Somebody will make a story to say why it's not when it is. Relates to Dogman. Dogman appears in popular culture in the 80s. Uh, Steve Cook, who was a Traverse City disc jockey, wrote a song about the legend of Dogman. And so he sort of outlined this story in the song he, he put together, and then he played it on air. And this was, again, in 1987, a year ending in seven. And he is also purportedly behind that Gable film. So he just sort of did it as a, you know, a thing to do. He put the song together, he put it out there, but then people were reporting that they actually were seeing things. And so that's the earliest sort of pop culture reference that we can find in terms of the dog man. Then again, people, and even if you look at. Now she says something interesting after the song or, you know, the video now more reports coming in. Now there could be two different reasons for that. People are now hearing that dog mass stories are coming out. I'm not saying because of that, because it's fake or not, but stories are coming out. Now, some people feel more comfortable coming out with their story. So not all stories that come out after something was called fake or this, and they're all fake. You just got to listen to within those stories because some of these stories are true. And there's different reasons why somebody decides to finally come out with their story you know is it because more people talking about it or you know a great hey our good friend of the channel bigfoot michigan rob hey danny if you're in the chat danny if you're still there put a link to bigfoot michigan rob's um book his book that he just came out with has 45 individual stories about the cryptids that he has gotten over the years from people with emails and stories and puts it all together, you know? So, so a lot of ways, Bigfoot Michigan Rob is an outlet for people to come out with their story. They feel comfortable with Bigfoot Michigan Rob. And that's what we, that, that's what's so great about, I, I'm going to say this about my channel a uh, world Bigfoot radio channel. You know, uh, uh, Danny Staten has a channel that there are people that will listen to you and listen to your story and not automatically say, oh, your story is fake. You're not. Because first of all, no, no story is 100% real unless it's happening to you, right? Unless you're there at 100%. We're, we're, we're still taking firsthand stories I have to take like 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 my Bigfoot encounter and, and 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 listen. I know maybe you guys believe my story. Majority of the people in the world aren't gonna believe it, but that that that's just the way it is. It's just it's just it's just for me and the ten other people that were there. It's hundred percent real for us because we were there. But I understand that a lot of you might not believe it because you weren't there. So that's why I always say no story is really truly 100% unless you were there. 80%, 70%. That's why you really got to study the people you're hanging out with, the people you talk to. Bigfoot Michigan Rob is, when you listen to him, when you listen to his body language, you know he is not going to uh, put a story in his book that is completely fake. It just it's but But he's putting it out there because it has great story within it. No, he's putting out stories that he feels that are real to you. There's a great outlet for that. And that's what an awesome. And if you guys, uh, uh, I, I'm not on my channel. We did an interview with Bigfoot Michigan Rob on his encounter. It's an amazing story. Go to my videos, not the live section, on the video section. Uh, I forgot the exact title, but I know... Um, Bigfoot Michigan Rob's name's in it. Listen to his uh, interview that we did with him about his encounter. He doesn't know if what he saw was a Bigfoot, a dogman, a demon. 
he knows it was something more. And listen to his story, you know, and you know, these stories are there. This is was great. Let's hear a little bit more of these group, these girls. And in line, people report what they think they see in the woods of Michigan as something they cannot identify. Therefore, maybe it was Dogman because it was a it was a beast and it was very large. Dogman is the thing that just houses all of the things we cannot explain. Exactly. So tell me how this crosses lines into Wisconsin. There is a very similar beast, I guess, uh, the Beast of Bray Road, which I think is a pretty cool name. Uh -huh. And those encounters in Wisconsin date to the 30s, and they're very similar. It's a dog-like man or a Sasquatch-like person. And this one is known for jumping over motorists to scare them and makes these very quick appearances. But again, it's very big. He's very elusive. He's very agile, very similar to Michigan's dog man. So, so either he's well-traveled or we have a whole species that we're unaware of. Yes. So yeah. why do you think stories like this persist in the minds of Michiganders? my opinion, part of it is that Michigan and Wisconsin, there are just these huge tracts of land that are woods and open and, you know, there are all sorts of things that live in it. And when people are hunting or fishing or camping and they see something, they could see all sorts of things that they can't explain. And if you get enough people who claim to encounter something, then these myths and legends perpetuate. So I think that it's just people encounter things in the woods that they can't explain and, uh, you know, you get people of similar thinking and they just sort of kind of go with one another. But, you know, for a long time, there were stories of large cats in Michigan that were sort of dismissed. And now we've got cougar sightings. Yes, that's <laughs> well, There's quite true. a few in the last few months. Well, so I'm not saying there's a dog man out there that's going to show up. However, who knows what's living in the forests of Michigan? All right. So, okay. So, like I said, a lot of videos are... Um, Copyrights, I can't really show. So hopefully, I don't know if that really gave you, if you never heard the dog man, kind of a, a, a bigger story than dog man. Now, now again, these people are from Michigan. So, you know, Wisconsin, Michigan. So they're talking about it there. But but Bigfoot, uh, World Bigfoot Radio said in the chat, you saw him too. He said that, you know, these stories are all around the world. Now let's go, let's come back and think about this. What's the bigger story? And remember, what's the bigger story depends on what you think is the bigger story for yourself. Now, I'm going to go look at the voting tab real quick. All right. So looking at the voting tab, 42 people voted. 86% says Bigfoot is the bigger story than Dogman. And that makes sense just because Bigfoot is more known, you know, Bigfoot stadium level. Dogman is club level. But again, whatever your reason for the bigger story is, is, is your, your reason only, you know, I'm looking at as the bigger story. I had an encounter with the Bigfoot, so I know he's real. And if they came out tomorrow and said, Eric, Bigfoot is real. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be interested to see when maybe now they got the Bigfoot and we, get, you know, and I don't want them to hurt the Bigfoot, but I understand take some blood, do some DNA and, and do some, you know, like trying to find traits on how the development of Bigfoot was created, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. So it wouldn't be a shock of a story for me, but if a dog man, if they had a dog man that came out tomorrow saying the dog man's real, holy shit. That's a bigger story for me. I'd be like, what? You mean a werewolf type of, of I mean, your, your mind goes in so many different places than with the Bigfoot, right? To me, dog man would be like, That'd be the most incredible story in a weird way. Like, is it scary? He's going to eat our babies. Is it, you know what I mean? Because even though you think of the Bigfoot, you think of the woods and all that, as long as you go in the woods, you're fine. But but you hear about a dog, man. Is he, is he going to go in their backyard? He's going to eat our dogs or chickens? I mean, you'd be more freaked out with the dog, man, versus the Bigfoot. So for, that's why for me, for me, for this battle, for me, 
I'm going to choose the dog man would be the bigger story than the Bigfoot. Like I said, for different reasons. We all had different reasons on what's the bigger story. So, again, you guys want to go in there and change your vote? You can. But, I, but there's nothing wrong. So, even though you guys voted. Eric, who do you think would win in a fight? That's a damn good question. Right now, people, right now, in the chat, I want you guys in the chat. If a Bigfoot and a Dogman fight, who would win? Now, in theory, the Bigfoot's bigger. He's stronger. He's more muscular. The, the Dogman is more skinnier, slimmer. Now, it'd be like, if you had a prize fight, there's a reason there's a different division in, 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 in fighting, right? Because the heavyweight, nine out of ten times, will knock the shit out of somebody in uh, light, whatever they call it, mid-level, small level, will slaughter because of the strength and that. But now... But the question is, but what if JoJo, what if the dog man has claws? I don't know how big it is. And Bigfoot only has fist. Could he claw into the Bigfoot and smash his eyes out and stuff? So, you know, we don't know exactly what kind of, you know, claws he has and all that. But if I look at a prize fight, I think Bigfoot would win. But I can see where a dog man. So let's look at everybody in the chat. Let's see here. Let's see when we started this. Okay. Bigfoot would win. Bigfoot would win. <laughs> Bigfoot would win. No doubt. Bigfoot would walk the dog. <laughs> Bigfoot would walk the dog. I like that, Danny. Dog man. And I can see that, you know, if, if the dog man has claws, like Wolverine style, I could get him. Bigfoot get much larger when Bigfoot. Again, Bigfoot, the prize fighter. Bigger, longer reach, stronger. Bigfoot can use weapons. Now, true, true. But in this fight, there is no weapons. You put him in a ring, there's no weapons, there's no nothing. A Bigfoot, a heavyweight versus a, a leatherweight, you know, you know. But you never know. Maybe maybe that Bigfoot, uh, they have claws and sharp teeth and faster. Hey, maybe like a Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee's slim, but Bruce Lee's fast. He's so fast, you can't get him. You know? But I would say 8 out of 10 times, a Bigfoot would probably win. But like I said, we don't know if the Dogman has super claws and all that. But it's a good it's a good one, right? Bigfoot. Bigfoot will break <laughs> Dogman's neck. Bigfoot. Has no claws. Yeah, yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. Bigfoot is is more is fist versus claws. But the thing is about the claws. Now, if Dogman has claws, if it's not, if it's claws not a certain kind of a length, even with the Dogman claws in a Bigfoot, it probably won't do that much, depending on the size. Bigfoot up the rump world will probably do things. Bigfoot thaw boulders and trees. <laughs> That's what I mean. But I'm talking about no trees, no nothing. You put him in a boxing ring, but they can't do that. I, at the end of the day, it would be a prize. It'd be a heavyweight fighting a, a featherweight. Bigfoot would take Dogman for a pee. <laughs> Dogman would go in and would rip Bigfoot up. <laughs> I think I think the Matt Sasquatch and the Sheep Squatch cross is more interesting than that. Just one to one, I know. So I guess uh, what I'm what I'm seeing here is is hold on. Shelly says I voted Bigfoot because of something else, and I it can climb. Where was it climbing up into? What they were climbing up was it something else? Uh, maybe being extracted out of the thing. But regardless, so for me, Dogman would be the bigger story because I for me like again nothing shocks me. About Bigfoot, because we know he's real. But what 
if Dogman was real, how is he real? What does he come from? Is he from a wolf? Is he from a skinwalker? You know what I mean? There's so much more. That's the reason why I say he's a bigger story just for that. Guys, I hope you really, truly enjoyed today's show. At the end of the day, these things are incredible. Um, you know, I'm. It, it's, it's, it's a great way to get everybody together and have some fun because we both, at the end of the day, we all respect the Bigfoot and Dogman. I know majority of all you believe in the Bigfoot. I know for a lot of you, the dog man is still, you know, you know, iffy and that's fine. And that's fine. That's, that's, you know, you know, some people say, some people say dog man is another clan of a Bigfoot. There is one belief. I don't know if it's true or not that, that, that the soldiers for the Bigfoot are the dog man. So there are different theories, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but tomorrow there's another throw down. It's a different kind of a throwdown. That was actually came from one of you in the chat. I don't know which one of you. One of you said, Eric, you should do a throwdown with Winchester Mystery House versus the White House Haunted House. That's great. That's next throwdown for Paranormal Thursday. The Winchester Mystery House versus the haunt the, the White House Haunted. What's the bigger story? I really truly hope you guys are 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 having fun and, and I, I'm you know I like to change things up a little bit on the channel just to spice things up and have a little fun do little things differently so I kind of like these throw downs and there's no, there's no there's no right or wrong like I said there's different reasons on why you pick the bigger story like I said I know Bigfoot is overall the more popular story from around the world he's stadium level. You know, Dogman is club level. I know. But there's different reasons on why something's a bigger story. In this way, we get to share our information. And I want to appreciate Danny, uh, World Bigfoot Radio, all of you, all of you who put in your some viable information about these cryptids. That is fantastic. I love it. Uh, thank you guys so much. Please, if you can, leave comments. I'm getting like z like zero to five comments for each episode. So after the show's over, please leave a comment and put in the comments. What do you want to see as a show down? If I do another show, I, I will be doing another show on Tuesday on Bigfoot Tuesday. Is there another showdown within two different kind of a Bigfoot creatures or something you want to show down? Do you want to battle? Put it in the comments. Don't put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. So I can see it. And next time, the showdown could be what one you pick. So, guys, get in your cars. Get get ready. And remember, August 26th, I will be spending three solid days in the Olympic Mountains researching the Bigfoot. My son and I are going to be backpacking. We're going to be back. We're going to be in the woods because Olympic Mountains is supposed to be one of the most hot spots for Bigfoots around the world. So, get ready. Get in your car because I want to see you guys next time on the Paranormal.